Oh man, oh man, all right. So I'm here at Toys R Us and Pete wants me to buy him a toy to play with and he is getting impatient. The clock is ticking. This is pretty tough, man. I mean, I've got limited funds and Pete says he only wants to play with the highest quality toys. So hopefully there's a Holy shit. Pokemon spin-off games. The games that answer that question we all have in our minds. What are our Pokemon doing when they're not battling? Hi, hi. This is such an interesting handful of games with such a crazy amount of variety. Instead of the typical Pokemon series gameplay, traveling through routes and cities, capturing Pokemon through random encounters with Pokeballs, and turn-based battles with trainers, these spin-off games give those creatures we know and love some time to shine in all different types of genres. Listen, I love Pokemon, but I've gotta admit that the main series games can definitely feel a bit repetitive across different generations for me, so to have all these other unique Pokemon experiences supplementing them is pretty awesome. Even if you're not into the standard Pokemon gameplay, there's bound to be something in this collection of games that'll pique your interest. That being said though, there is no denying that the quality of these things can be absolutely all over the place. Some of these spin-off games are looked at just as fondly as the mainline ones, like the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series with its roguelike elements, and I remember hella enjoying the Pokemon Ranger games back then. But while some of these games were definitely great, there's also a good handful of them that kinda suck cast forms balls. A surprising amount of Pokemon spin-off games are incredibly mediocre, forgettable, or just straight up terrible experiences. Man, is this game TM36? Cause uh... It's making me want to self-destruct. I can't wait to eventually play all these games one by one and absolutely go off on them, but right now, for me personally, I think the best place to start is Pokemon Rumble for the Wii. Pokemon Rumble is the first entry in the Pokemon Rumble series. It was released via the Wii Shop channel on June 16th, 2009, and is the first Pokemon game I've ever played. The first one. It wasn't the mainline game, it wasn't even one of the more highly regarded spin-off games. It was Pokemon Rumble, one of the worst received Pokemon games in fact. My entire first impression of the highest grossing media franchise of all time rested solely in the hands of this fucking thing. Alright, so, one of the worst Pokemon games of all time, huh? How could that be? I mean, just on the surface, it blends right in. It's it's not like there are any key indicators that this game would be any fucking worse than the other ones. Yeah, we might as well just address the elephant in the room right now. So, why do these Pokemon look like they were beaten senseless? Well, the answer is all in the game's lore. The whole deal with Pokemon Rumble is that in this series, all of the Pokemon are toys, which at first sounds kinda cool. I mean, shit, I can sure get behind a Pokemon toy or two. But nah, in reality, this game's definition of a toy Pokemon is taking your average everyday Pokemon and just kinda... Mutilating it. I don't know if that's the actual canonical explanation for this art style. I mean, these models first appeared in My Pokemon Ranch, a shitty Wii Wear game that came out about a year before Rumble. That game was made mostly just to provide extra Pokemon storage for your Diamond and Pearl games, so I can understand why they didn't go all out for the character models here, you know? But then they just decided to repurpose these things and start calling them toy Pokemon for Pokemon Rumble, and I guess that's just what they are now. <laughs> Some shit ass models. Look, man, I could maybe excuse these ugly ass Pokemon if the game itself was at least good, but unfortunately, many people tend to agree that this is one of the weakest Pokemon games out there, which makes a lot of sense when you realize it was developed by Umbrella, the same company that made a bunch of the other worst Pokemon spin-offs. To be fair, I'm pretty sure the distaste for the Rumble series comes from the later entries, particularly Pokemon Rumble U. This first one, though, a lot of people seem to look back at it fondly, even if my personal opinion of it has definitely gone down a bit. I will say, though, to this game's credit, it did a good job for me as a kid. Again, it was my first experience with a Pokemon game, and then I later went on to play Pokemon Heart Gold on the DS after it, and that beautiful game is what really got me hooked on the franchise. Pokemon Rumble was clearly, at the very least, good enough to get me interested in playing more Pokemon games, and even playing it now as an adult, I definitely don't think it's the worst Pokemon game, it's just one of them. Well, I guess it's time to find out why people think that. Let's pop it open. Oh, that's why. Our journey begins with this little toy Rattata. His dream is to become the champion of the Pokemon Battle Royale, this little thing where a bunch of Pokemon fight in an arena until only one remains. Rattata's opponents are very strong, they're legends, and there can only be one winner, but he's determined. Rattata breaks in through a gap in the doorway, and this is it. It's time. Rattata is ready to conquer this challenge. Alright, so Rattata sucked, but that's okay, we're here for you buddy, and you know what we're gonna do to make sure we're strong enough to take those people on next time? Just f***ing find someone better. 
This is the beginning of our Pokemon Rumble adventure, and what I said wasn't a joke by the way. We get sent back to this terminal, with the sole task of going out into other areas and finding someone more competent than Rotata to compete in the Battle Royale. <laughs> These spin-off games and their twists, man. You see, usually in the main Pokemon games, you find a handful of Pokemon to get attached to, and love, and nurture, and really grow with throughout your whole adventure, but oh man, that's the last thing you want to do in Pokemon Rumble. <laughs> this f***ing thing, fuck this guy. Remember, the whole premise of this game is that the Pokemon are toys, which not only serves to excuse their shitty models, but also to explain the strange differences this game has from your standard Pokemon adventure. According to the opening scene, your Pokemon can't grow, because they're toys. They can't level up, they can't learn more than two moves, and they can't get stronger. However powerful they are when you find them, that's how powerful they'll remain for eternity. Despite being toys though, I guess they can still use moves and engage in battles because, well, they are still Pokemon at the end of the day. Yeah, I don't think the developers really had a good way to justify how all this shit works, but whatever, let's just indulge in this half-baked fantasy. We have got a battle royale to go win after all. So let's get into the gameplay. In Pokemon Rumble, instead of playing as a trainer, we play as the Pokemon. Our goal is to find a Pokemon powerful enough to enter the battle royale, and then win it. To do that, we have to travel through six different themed areas, all being inhabited by their own batch of Pokemon. The game controls via the classic sideways Wii Remote. We move with the D-pad, switch Pokemon with the A button, and use the 1 and 2 buttons to attack, with each button deploying a different Pokemon move. You're gonna be spamming these attacks like crazy to wipe out all these hordes of Pokemon before they get a chance to wipe out hordes of you. Most of the Pokemon you kill will drop some currency upon death, but every so often a Pokemon will drop their corpse upon death, which can then be collected and revitalized with Wonder Keys, which are apparently what give these toys life in the first place. You get three Wonder Keys per level, essentially acting as lives, and if your Pokemon runs out of HP out on the field, you lose one of them and have to send out one of the other Pokemon you collected. So it's in your best interest to gather as many Pokemon as possible throughout these areas, and just switch out before dying to avoid exhausting one of your lives. You make your way through a few sections per area, all very linear and straightforward, just kind of mashing your attack buttons and avoiding swarms of attacks being hurled at you. After hopping through enough sections, you eventually reach the area's boss, and let me tell you, this shit gets intense. These boss Pokemon are ginormous, have a ton of health, and are bar none the most intimidating creatures you'll ever lay your eyes on. Yo, Magnemite, kill Charmeleon, please. Thank you. Defeating a boss gets you a lot of coins, and sometimes the boss itself becomes collectible and usable. We then get to leave the area and take a look at all the Pokemon we collected along the way, with a special emphasis on the one with the highest strength number. Then we're sent back to the terminal, where we get to select another area to repeat the process in. After going through enough of these areas and collecting a Pokemon with a high enough strength number, we finally regain access to the Battle Royale, where we aimlessly find a bunch of random Pokemon in an enclosed arena and have to be the last one standing. You're under a time limit, but every Pokemon you kill in this arena drops a clock that increases it slightly. If you manage to fight through the Battle Royale until you're the last Pokemon, Pokemon remaining, you win. And that's pretty much the gameplay of Pokemon Rumble. You just keep playing through these areas, attacking as many Pokemon in your path as you see fit, and taking down the bosses at the end, all until you get a strong enough Pokemon to enter the Battle Royale, and then win the Battle Royale. Honestly, it's fun. It's very, very simple, but it is fun, and I do enjoy it. The problem, though, is that... I don't know about you, but that all seemed a bit short. Like, that wasn't a lot. Six areas, then a battle royale at the end? It feels like that should have lasted a bit longer, right? Well guys, great news. Pokemon Rumble must have been thinking the exact same thing, cause they made it last a bit longer, alright? After you beat this battle royale, you unlock rank B. What we just did was rank C, and now we have to go through rank B, where they make you do it all again. And then they make you do it again. And then they make you do it again. And then you unlock advanced mode, where they make you do it again, and again, and again, and again. And then you unlock EX mode, where you- And this is about the point where I started to realize why people don't really care for this game all too much. If you want to complete Pokemon Rumble, clearing every possible area on your way to the end, you'll have to clear 54 of them. 54! That might not sound like a lot at first, but please keep in mind that throughout those 54 levels, all you're doing is this for hours. It gets very repetitive. And again, the gameplay isn't terrible. I must have enjoyed it plenty as a kid if I was willing to play it to completion, and even nowadays, I can have fun with this. It can definitely be satisfying to put all these suffering abominations out of their misery, but at the end of the day, 11.59pm, the game is just way too flawed and underdeveloped to warrant lasting this long. It stretches out a very small amount of content without amping it up or adding twists or making things more challenging as you progress. It all feels very monotonous and incomplete. In my opinion, the cause of some of this game's biggest problems is 
is honestly the whole toy thing. The fact that these Pokemon are toys instead of Pokemon. It's the entire concept of the game, and yet it can be blamed for so many of its shortcomings. Firstly, let me remind you that because these Pokemon are toys, they can't get stronger. Each Pokemon you encounter has an arbitrary number attached to it denoting its strength. This number will never increase, no matter how much you actually use the Pokemon. And if this number isn't high enough to get you into the Battle Royale, you will be forced to go out into one of these six areas and collect some stronger Pokemon. The inability to make your existing Pokemon stronger, and only being able to get through the game by constantly replacing old Pokemon with newer, stronger ones opens up a lot of problems for me. I mean, it does technically make sense from a logical lore perspective. They are toys, and people do replace their old toys with new ones when they get bored. I mean, Pete used to be into race cars and shit, and now his bedroom looks like this. It's just the circle of life. But the difference is, in this game, continuously replacing old toys with new ones is what makes the experience shitty rather than keeping it fresh. As a result of this design decision, the game never really gets difficult. Some bosses can be challenging, but these parts? Almost never. The opponents do technically get stronger the further into the game you go. Their strength numbers do get bigger and bigger, thus inevitably rendering some of your lower strength Pokemon too weak to take them down. But this doesn't do much for the difficulty when you're constantly collecting Pokemon of equal strength to your opponents that you can just use right then and there. I mean, think about it. If I'm out here facing a bunch of Pokemon that are significantly stronger than my own, all I have to do is collect one of these things by random chance. Once I do, I can just swap to it and bam, I am now officially just as strong as the opponents I'm facing. This is how the entire game goes. Your strength will always increase at the exact same rate as your opponents because you're encouraged to constantly switch to your strongest fighters the moment you collect them. It's why the game goes out of its way to highlight the most powerful Pokemon you collected after every area, because that's the only Pokemon in the lot that you'd ever care to use. This all just makes the game kind of a mindless cakewalk. The AI can already be stupid as hell sometimes, but even when it's not, it's just not gonna put up that much of a fight, and most creatures can be taken down in just a couple of hits with the right moves. And not only does this constant swapping thing make the game incredibly easy, but it also just makes every Pokemon I get feel insignificant. Again, in the main Pokemon games, you raise your team, you go through shit together, and you really start growing attached to them over your journey. But here? Why get attached to any of my Pokemon when I'm just gonna end up replacing them in a matter of minutes? I mean, the whole fucking plot of the game is that it's this Rattata's dream to win the big battle royale, but after playing for five minutes, he's completely forgotten about. The game goes out of its way to include all these little features that end up barely amounting to anything because of this mechanic. They put a ton of emphasis on Pokemon with abilities, acting like they're so special, but why should I care if the Pokemon I just got has this special ability when, again, I'm just gonna replace it with someone stronger? And hell, with this game being so easy, it's not like you can even tell the difference anyways. Ability or not, this thing still freaking died in two hits and kills others in two hits. And then there are those coins we earned throughout our adventure. What do those things even do anyways? Well, they can be taken down here to the bottom of the terminal, where you can use them to buy a new Pokemon, or buy your existing Pokemon a random new move. You can also release your old obsolete Pokemon down here in exchange for some coins if you just want to piss on their grave that much harder. Just like the abilities, all of this stuff is made irrelevant by the fact that if I were to spend my coins to craft my dream Pokemon with the most useful possible moves, I'd just end up replacing it with a random Pokemon I encounter later simply on the basis of it being arbitrarily and objectively stronger. And again, just like the abilities, the game's already easy enough without this stuff, so it almost feels like cheating being able to just fine-tune the perfect Pokemon with whatever moves you want. And oh boy, speaking of moves, why don't we talk about them for a bit? Now I do think it's cool how Pokemon Rumble puts a new twist on battling. We get to see what all these familiar Pokemon moves look like from a top-down, real-time perspective. Kinda. While it is cool to see what some of these moves look like in this setting, most of them are sort of just generic little animations that don't really look or feel like you're actually using the move in question. I especially love seeing random opponents charging up an attack that looks like it's gonna be some serious shit. like, oh god, we better stand back, this guy's about to- <laughs> Oh. Uh, false alarm, guys, just kill him. Even the bosses do this, and this is something that confused me all throughout the game. Every single boss in the game does this same exact move where it becomes invincible for a while as it charges up what you think is gonna be some devastating attack, but then once it's done charging, it just does this little pebble-encrusted twirl that pushes you back a little bit, and that's it. It doesn't even hurt you, it just pushes you back a little. Why does this move have so much buildup, and why does every single boss do it? But perhaps the most egregious offense when it comes to Pokemon moves in this game is Ditto. Anybody out there a Ditto fan? I've always loved Ditto, he's the Pokemon that can transform into his opponent and completely steal their identity and bank details. He's in Pokemon Rumble, but they couldn't be bothered to give him his signature transforming ability. The only move he can use in this game is fucking struggle, and I am struggling to not transform this game into deleted. Bitch. And on top of all of that, once again, a good handful of the moves available in this game are just kinda made irrelevant by how easy the overall game is. There are some moves in here that are just objectively better than others, and once you find a Pokemon with the right moves, you'll be able to defeat everyone almost instantaneously. Why bother wasting your time using moves that inflict status conditions or decrease your opponent's stats when you can alternatively just plow through them all in two hits with your strong attacks and then just move on to the next sort of enemies? Now the bosses, on the other hand, can occasionally provide some challenge? They are harder, there's no denying that. The fights aren't that unique 
unique from each other, and not all of them are tough, but they do have a lot of HP and strong attacks that you will have to act carefully about dodging. The bosses all look really fucking stupid though, and I'd rather laugh in their face than be afraid of dying to them. I'd say these boss fights and the battle royales are where the game shines most. They're the most challenging parts of the game, and some of the only times you might actually have to think about what you're doing for a second to ensure you don't get killed. I will say though, it's pretty horse how these exceptionally stronger Pokemon are allowed to just drop in halfway through the battle royale, like how the hell is that fair? They're supposed to be like the champions or something, but they get to avoid half the battle royale? That just makes it easier for them to win, why are they given handicaps? But uh... Don't worry, they probably won't win anyways. These battle royales can be challenging at times, but most of them were nothing special. Look how easy it is to kill these fucking things. Eventually, after climbing up to rank S on your first go around, the final battle royale challenger is Mewtwo, a super hyped up battle that barely amounts to anything. Damn. After you defeat that lame ass cat and thank god the game's finally over, you unlock advanced mode, and I honestly just about shit my pants the first time I saw this. I desperately wanted to be done by this point after doing the same thing so many times, so to have to do it all again? Oh god. Advanced mode has the exact same gameplay as normal mode, but while normal mode exclusively features Pokemon from Generation 1, Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, Advanced mode features Pokemon from Generation 4, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. And you know what that means. It's Burmy time, baby! Woo! Burmy is really good. I like Burmy. While this mode really isn't that much harder or different from normal mode because your strength will still increase one to one with your opponents, I will say there's something oddly charming about seeing these Gen 4 Pokemon being treated as these new unfamiliar creatures from what was at the time the newest Pokemon game. I mean these guys are old classics now, so it almost feels like time traveling playing this 2009 Wii game that came out when these things were indeed the latest and greatest. I wish Gen 2 and Gen 3 Pokemon could have appeared in Pokemon Rumble, but this is definitely fine. And hey, Advanced Mode may have forced me to play basically the same game a second time, but I will say Rank S's Battle Royale here was genuinely the most fun I had in the entire game. This was a difficult ass fight, and I really felt like I had to act carefully and make sure I had the most fine-tuned Pokemon possible to take these guys down. If the rest of the game had been like this, giving you opponents you couldn't just immediately match in strength, and forcing you to think about which Pokemon would be best, and what strategies to use, this game could have been a lot of fun, even despite its repetition. I genuinely quite enjoyed this last battle. After the advanced mode is completed, you unlock EX mode, and then probably break down crying because holy Jesus Christ, this game's actually still going. I was so unbelievably over the game by this point, I think I got legitimately angry there was still more game I had to play. Luckily though, this mode isn't quite the same as the previous ones. This is sort of an endless mode. Please just end. This mode has you compete in the battle royale for as long as you can before dying too many times. In here, you're given free reign to play through any area you want, now containing every Pokemon in the game, to really craft your dream team to last as long as possible with. To be completely honest, I just didn't have it in me to really give this mode my all, but it seems like a nice little end game activity, and a good way to really test your skills, since the rest of the game just doesn't do that. So that's all the content in the game, and as you can see, I've got a lot of issues with it, with most of those issues amounting to the game being underwhelming, monotonous, and just too easy. This might not have been so bad if the game was shorter, but they just stretch it out like crazy. Normal mode, advanced mode, and EX mode? Be serious for a second, guys. If the game were more fleshed out, started introducing new ideas and new mechanics, and amped up the difficulty and variety as it went on, it'd be great. It wouldn't feel bland anymore, and the simple gameplay could be made up for by the interesting level design or gameplay shakeups. Pokemon Rumble just has you experience the same stuff over and over, expecting you to just not notice how little happens throughout your journey. I like these areas, they've all got fun vibes and good music, but I never want to step foot in one of these fucking places ever again. They make you go to these same six areas over and over, and they don't really change as you progress. The layouts are slightly different with each rank, but you really can't tell. The Pokemon you can encounter also change, but that also doesn't amount to much since all that really matters is their strength number. The most exciting thing about these areas for me was trying to guess which Pokemon they were going to use as a boss, judging by the rest of the Pokemon that have appeared in the area. For example, this first area here is all about grass types. There are a bunch of Bulbasaurs everywhere, so the boss might be... Ivysaur? That makes sense. Oh, and this place right here is a beach, with a bunch of aquatic Pokemon like Horses and Goldeens, so clearly the boss of this area is gonna be something like... Yeah, yeah, total sense. Perfect sense. And before we finally get out of here, let's go ahead and talk about all this shit down here at the bottom of the terminal. We've got the recruit point, which lets you use coins or a password to recruit a Pokemon to your collection. The release point, allowing you to pick your least favorite Pokemon and turn them into pocket change. The training point, allowing you to buy a randomly chosen move for one of your Pokemon. The ability to store Pokemon in your Wii Remote. The ability to put up to three of your closest friends through hell by playing multiplayer. The collection of all the Pokemon you've obtained, and some stats. And let's not forget the ability to take pictures and save them to your SD card. Man, these toys were visually breathtaking already, but now we frame photos of 
of them getting annihilated on the battlefield and place them around the house. It's absolutely magical. And that has been Pokemon Rumble. It feels strange to me that I was able to say so many bad things about this game because honestly, I don't really hate it at all. I think it goes on for way too long and is a very basic and underdeveloped concept for a Pokemon spinoff, but I don't know, I really don't mind it. This is nowhere near the worst Pokemon game. It's not particularly great, but I wouldn't call it bad. As I said before, this was the game that introduced me to the Pokemon series, and I must have had a decent enough time with it back then to have been looking back at it so fondly all these years. I don't care for it all too much nowadays, I think it gets old pretty early into the adventure, but I still have a soft spot for it. Again, if they had made more varied layouts for these areas, had more puzzles, more mechanics, this game could have really been something special. That's something I think the game's sequel, Pokemon Rumble Blast for the 3DS, did fairly well. I remember playing a lot of this as a kid, and having a lot more fun with it. It definitely fleshed out the series' concept and gave it more substance. I may not have enjoyed how long the original went on for, but it was still fun enough for me that I kinda look forward to revisiting the sequel and seeing how much better it gets. And then after that, I'd love to see how they took this already bland and half-assed game and multiplied those traits by 7,000 with the later sequels. Ultimately, I'd say there isn't much of a reason to play the Pokemon Rumble series, unless you're a tiny-ass kid or a die-hard Pokemon fan that wants to put their unconditional love of the series in jeopardy. It doesn't ever really get that great, and you're just about guaranteed to enjoy most of the other spin-off games more. But hey, do keep in mind that I still had some fun, and that me playing this eventually led to this. Which is upsetting. Alright, well, I think now's a good time to make this hoarding problem a tiny bit worse. Let's purchase this bad boy. Man, that was a crazy f***ing fish! Oh, Pete! Guess what I bought! Oh, you're here! Finally! Let's see the toy, I can't wait. Alright, sure thing. Here it comes... Skablam! F***ing motherfucker. What? Wait, is that actually the toy you got? Really? I thought that was just a f***ing object. What, you don't like it? Come on, dude. I think it should have been pretty obvious what kind of toy I was wanting you to buy me. Okay, what is so obvious that I should... Oh, wait, I see. Uh-huh. So you wanted me to buy you a toy of a woman? Yeah? A certain woman with the uh, green hair, maybe? Yeah? Man, just get the f*** out with that.